Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager, here once again with another video on Superman Lois Season 3. So we are only just, you know, just over a month or so away from the return of DC TV in 2023 on the CW with the premiere of the ninth and final season of The Flash in early February. I think it's February 8th from memory. But that premiere will be about a month or just over a month or so until the premiere of Superman Lois' third season. Now it should be around that premiere date for The Flash's final season that we do get the trailer for season three of Superman Lois, potentially. It is usually a month or so before the show comes back that the, you know, the CW will release a trailer for the season, whether it's 30 seconds, whether it's a minute, it's, it's up in the air. But we did get a trailer for The Flash season nine well before a month out from the show coming back, like almost two months. But then again, it is the final season, so maybe they wanted to get it out there before the holiday break and all that and give people you know more time to know it's coming back. I'm not too sure. But I'm not expecting anything in regards to at least major promotional material for Superman and Lois until around that like early February mark, seeing that the show isn't back until March 14th. But you never know, we might get some early surprises. Who knows? It's up in the air. But in this video, we aren't going to be going over any promo material because, uh, I mean, spoiler, there isn't any as of yet outside of the minor stuff we've already gone over in previous videos. But we are going to go over some stuff regarding Bruno Mannheim, the villain for season three that was talked about from the actor Chad or Coleman over the past week or so, as well as some stuff regarding the world of Superman Lois, if you want to call it, and how characters potentially could or could not be used. But of course, throughout the video, be sure to let me know your various thoughts, opinions, theories, predictions, all that stuff in the comments section down below. Very curious to hear it as always. And of course, if you're going to enjoy the video, want to show your support, looking forward to Superman Lower Season 3, want to drop a like on the video to show your support and excitement. Now, the first thing to go over is an interview that Chad L. Coleman, who will be playing Bruno Mannheim in Season 3, did while promoting another project he was involved with. But of course, Superman Lois did come up and he was able to give some you know, insight into his character, Bruno Mannheim, within Superman and Lois' third season. And this, you know, what he says here does make me sort of like open my eyes even more to what the story could be for this season and uh, how it's going to be, you know, attacked from straight on, how it's going to affect the other characters, at least on this side of the show for this season, because of course, there's going to be some other storylines going on, but this should be the main one that we get to hang around with for most of the time. Now, unfortunately, I can't just play the interview on screen and all that because of copyright reasons, but I can link in the description down below for those who want to watch it. It's not the entire interview. It's like maybe like two minutes of the interview that's there, but I can sort of tell you what happened. So Chad, to give a bit of a summary, did say that Bruno Mannheim is not the typical villain. He's actually a bit of a villain that most you know, audience members or some of the audience might be able to root for and side with. And he is noted as a thrill ride by Chad. So I'm sure that means... You know, when he's on screen, it's a lot of excitement and there's not a lot of uh, downtime with him. I guess whenever he's on screen, he's a bit menacing and there's a lot of action involved, whether it involves punching or just high thrill, you know, scenes and a lot of tension and stuff like that. And apparently uh, Bruno Mannheim has really helped out Metropolis. So he, it sounds like he's going to have the support there within Metropolis, which might conflict with someone like Lois Lane in particular and her trying to get at Bruno Mannheim and into game because he's able to put on this facade to the public of Metropolis that allows him to have that I don't know if you'd call it leverage or just benefit of the doubt where he can then be doing some dodgy stuff with intergang and everything like that. But also in some areas, it could make Superman the villain to certain groups within Metropolis that support Bruno Mannheim and see him as this like, not godlike figure, but this like, I don't know. I don't know if you want, even want to use the term savior, but just this, you know, good dude in their opinion that's helped them out. Now, whether it's him helping out like lower, you know, economical areas or even just helping out just the, the standard person in Metropolis with helping them get through on their day-to-day -day lives. We don't know. That's for us to wait and find out. But it seems like he's going to have a lot of public support, which is going to make, as I said, not only Lois, uh, Lois Lane's job harder in regards to the journalism side and potentially trying to investigate him and bring him down, but also Superman's side in regards to trying to make you know uh, Bruno Mannheim out as a public uh, enemy or public villain and everything like that. So... This could be, you know, very interesting to see play out. And I was expecting it to be somewhat like this because it seemed like that Earth Prime comic was setting up Bruno Mannheim as having his like fingers in different pies around, um, you know, Metropolis and even maybe outside of Metropolis in regards to the powerful people. But I wasn't really expecting him to be maybe influencing just the general public, which can then 
work against Lois Lane and even Superman and stuff like that. So that gets me very interested to see how all this will play out and how that's going to affect the good guys, if you want to call it, as in Lois, Superman, everything like that. Now, based off everything that's come out in regards to like Chad L. Coleman, who plays Bruno, talking about some of the stuff and even just some other minor things about this season, it seems like Bruno is going to be there from the get-go. And it does make me wonder whether we see, even like us, the audience, sees Bruno as this good guy, if you want to call it. Like he's doing a lot of good things around the city and there's no real major inkling that he's doing anything villainous or he's even associated potentially with Intergang because Intergang could be there from episode one or somewhere early in the season as well doing a lot of stuff that Superman has to deal with and it's Lois that has to keep trying to dig deeper and deeper and deeper into the story to try and either find out who's associated with Intergang if it's not known at that time to her or just try and expose Bruno Mannheim and find a loophole in which she can do that but to us there could be all these things that are making Bruno seem like a good guy and that Lois is not crazy, but is more just trying to make Bruno bad or seem bad without any actual evidence. So I'm very curious to see how it's written and how it's portrayed to us, the audience. Because if, you know, as Chad was saying there, he's a bit of a rootable villain, like you can cheer for him. So I wonder if that's the point. It's written in that way and it's perceived in that way to us, the audience. And then it starts to unfold when Lois starts to see cracks and is able to potentially get to the, you know, the core and expose Bruno. So that could be a really cool story uh, structure if that's the way they're going. But yeah, I'm sure we'll learn more about Bruno Mannheim and just intergang in this whole season in regards to the story side as we get closer to the season coming out. Hopefully the trailer might give us some hints and stuff like that as to what's going on. But let's move on to some uh, a, a minor story or a minor discussion to end off the video. So this revolves around Supergirl and the role of Supergirl potentially in the show because a lot of people are curious about it. Now, Supergirl being used on Superman and Lois, if they do do that, could end up, if not just would end up in a plot hole for season one story that we had with Tal Ro, who was posing as Morgan Edge. Now, that is if they have it in a similar way to the Arrowverse version or Arrowverse storyline where Supergirl arrived on Earth when she was younger and Superman was only like, what, a few years into him actually being Superman. If they randomly do that, Season one story where Tal Ro was Kal-El's like only living relative or Kryptonian would be looked at differently to say the least. We're to the point where you go, um, that doesn't really make sense. Where's she been this whole time? Has she been on Earth? That doesn't really work out. Like I think the only way you can make that happen is if she survived and was somewhere like the Phantom Zone for all those years and then came to Earth right now and appeared at like in the present day, not in the past because... I'm sure Tao Ro would have been able to track her down as well. But this does bring up the, I think, decent conversation where could Superboy just be used as the, you know, Supergirl replacement, if you want to call it, where maybe Jordan, when he is of like an adult age, is based elsewhere. So when he's into his adult life, isn't living at home in Smallville anymore, he is based elsewhere as, you know, a Superboy or whatever it might be would that be like a national city or something like that you know he doesn't follow in his follow you know in his uh, father's footsteps by being based in metropolis or any city like that so we could even you know he could even be based elsewhere in the world could be in england could be in the north pole people might, people might think he's santa i don't know of course for us to even like potentially see that we would you know be waiting like multiple more seasons for, of this show so who even knows if we even get close to potentially seeing that come to the screen but just in regards to whether Supergirl does make a presence in this timeline and story and all that, it is a decent chance she's just completely skipped over after the disconnect from the Arrowverse that was revealed in the season two finale. And Jordan, or maybe even Jonathan, if he does get powers, does fill that void. Now, I think this is not going to make everyone happy, but I just don't see how Supergirl can play into this show now, at least in a way in which people would want it, where it's probably played by Melissa Bonoist, which most people would want. And it doesn't sort of affect that season one story because even in season one, that storyline didn't really make sense if it was connected to the Arrowverse at the time. Like we were like, you know, because the whole thing was like, oh, you know, Tal Ro is Superman's last relative. We're just like, well, hold on. Uh, there's a show on at the moment called Supergirl. What's going on there? I mean, hello, that's Kal-El's cousin. So <laughs> what the hell? Now, of course, with the disconnect at the end of last season, that storyline is fine now. There's no plot holes. But if you were now to bring in Supergirl, which a lot of people want, it would have to be this one where she was lost elsewhere in the universe and now appears on Earth in the present day with no you know, no connection to the past, no growing up on Earth. She is brand new to Earth. That's the only way you could do it. And you could do it that way, 
but I think you might have to devote too much time to that. Like a character getting used to Earth and everything like that, maybe even getting used to her powers on, you know, now that she's on Earth, like Superman would have had to done, uh, do as well. So you probably have to jump through a lot of like, no, not logical hoops there, but just in regards to like spending a lot of time on the character, which I don't know if they would do. Not saying they wouldn't, I think it's just hard to do that character if their character hasn't been based on Earth for a certain amount of time and done a lot of development off screen. But um, yeah, that's all to talk about in this video. I think that's enough. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, it'd be awesome. You could drop a like on to show your support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions on all the stuff we went over. Very curious to hear what you guys, you know, have to say about all, the, all these uh, different topics we went over. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I will catch you guys later. Goodbye.